Okay, well, thank you very much indeed. We will now proceed. I'm hoping we can finish this session by four o'clock. Um, but it is an enormous topic. Kuwait's got one of the most ambitious investment programs for its water and desalination sector. It's already got one of the largest power and water sectors in the Middle East. And we're going to hear now about Kuwait's independent water projects and uh, independent waste water treatment plants, as well as other projects which are part of the utilities program. And there is nobody better to update us about this than our next speaker. Engineer Sohaila Marafi is director in the Department of Studies and Research in the Ministry of Electricity and Water, which is the supreme procurement agency for the electricity and water sector in Kuwait. So would you please welcome Sohaila Marafi. Hello, everybody. As Ed said, uh, my name is Sheila Marafi. I'm the director of uh, the R&D, and I do the planning for Kuwait uh, Master Plan for Power and Water, and up to 2030, and now we are updating our plan to 2040. Uh, basically, I'm going to talk about forecasting water demand and water demand availability capacity and future generation sanitation expansion projects project for alternative energy. This is extra, it's not water, but it's, uh, I would like to show what we do in Kuwait for alternative energy as well. And emergency are all mobile units and how we are saving unit water and the challenges. And wastewater projects, that's not my specialties, but I'm just uh, presenting what's going on in Kuwait. Basically, we collect the data every year and update it every, every five years and update it every year from housing authority, university, industrial loads that are required, and we projected our annual increase, which is used to be about average 6 to 8 percent, but now has been reduced to 3 to 4 percent. And the uh, additional amount of water required for Kuwait now is about uh, 450 million per gallon to 2030. That's according to the plan with the housing, with the housing project coming up, the new cities and, and the industrial area. Uh, basically, what we have now in 2010, we have 360 maximum demand it was, and availability was 400 uh, million per gallon. And then 2015, uh, demand was 460 and 480 availability, and we expect 2030 to reach 850 million per gallon, and uh, the, the availability should be 1,100 uh, million per gallon. As you see, it's, it's growing rapidly because we have five. Uh, five new cities, two already under construction and is running, and three new cities are coming up. And the future desalination projects uh, uh, is going to be uh, uh, with the private sector, Azor North Phase 2, which is tender already, and closing date is 17 January. And uh, it's, uh, it's 1,800 megawatts uh, generation and 102 uh, MSF or MED. It's, it, it, it depends on the proposal that coming. And El Khairan steam turbine is 1,800 uh, megawatt and 125 million per gallon water. And, it's, and as, as well with the Kuwait Authority for Partnership Projects. And it's going to be tendered uh, soon, uh, within a month or two. They're just on the final discussion about the fuel piping and where we get it from. And we see steam turbine. According to the new law last year, we have got approval from uh, Council of Ministers that MEW can run with, uh, which was PTB for CAB, that we can tender uh, our power station. The problem is with the housing authority and uh, oil sector, they, they de their demand comes like we want it in five years. And in order to do that, we have to plan ahead. But with CAP, it's need to have consortium and consultant to study and prepare document. With MEW, it's faster. We just prepare the tender, tender it, evaluate, and forward. With CAP, it takes longer, three years longer than we do. As we so we, we request approval that we run parallel with them to, 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 to be able to, to, need, to meet the demand required for the future. And Azor North Phase 3 and 4 is going to be combined. It, originally it was 800 for, it was separate, but now they're going to be combined. It's 1,800 uh, megawatt of power and 75 million per gallon. It's going to be tender towards the end of this year. And then you have Shaiba South, it's uh, its existing power station. It has uh, 40, 40 million per gallon. It's going to be replaced by 50 and it's going to be phased out starting 2017, 2018, and it's going to be tendered by that by 2020. 
and Doha East is existing as well with 100 million per, with the, with 100 million, with 15 per gallon, and it's going to be tender about 100, uh, 100 million per gallon as well, and it's going to be phased out 2019, 2018. It's going to be tender 2021. So these are the projects that is actually, there's more projects after that, after 2030, but these are that's going to be uh, for 2020-22 and will cover uh, the, the required load and the water until 2030. Azor North, as I said, is 100, 100, 100, uh, 102 million per gallon. The project will be t is, uh, tendered by uh, uh, Public Authority for Partnership Projects, CAP, and it was tendered 6 September and closed date 17 January. So far, there's no extension required. And these are the short list for con companies and consortiums that's been qualified to uh, bid for the proposals. And if you go to www.ptb.gov.au, you will see the update on the project coming up in Kuwait, in, in energy, in municipality, in, in treated water, all of them. And Al Khiran, uh, Khiran is going to be steam turbine. Azor is, uh, phase two is going to be combined cycle, but Al Khiran is going to be steam turbine because the oil sector said we don't have any any available of gas uh, for the new project, so we're going with the steam turbine, which is MEW for operation operation uh, pr uh, problem is they prefer steam turbine than combined cycle. Okay, and the total water is going to be 125 million per gallon, and the project is tendered by. Uh, cap and it will be tender second quarter, so we will expect it is after between April and uh, June to be tendered. And the shortlist companies are the same one, almost the same one as the, the previous one. And uh, this are, this the one has been qualified for the for the project. Khairan is uh, Khairan is two phases. This is phase one that's going to be tendered now. Phase two will be tendered. Uh, maybe by 2026, 2027, uh, or maybe earlier, but so far was not, not yet planned to be tendered uh, until later. And the other things that we're going to talk about is uh, a new steam turbine. This is the one we have exception, uh, to, took an exception from uh, the council of minister, minister of council that, uh, that we need to, to tender it parallel to uh, cab projects. And it's, uh, it will produce 75 million per gallon, as, and it is MSF. And it will be tendered soon. We are, we are finalizing the, the tender documents right now, and we tender and evaluated by MEW as a government project. Shortlist for companies of uh, consortiums, that's not, that's not included, sorry, by mistake. It just happened by mistake. Okay, uh, RO. We have tendered an RO, and it's the final station. We have two RO units coming in Doha area, and it's uh, 60 million per gallon each one. The first tender, the first one has been tendered in under final, final evaluations, but the infrastructure for the second one is included. So the phase two will be tendered by 2022, maybe. But if we need it earlier, we'll be tender it. It depends on the water. Uh, demand that is if it's increased or not. So far, we are un under control of the water demand. We have an, a, new, a new thing that we said: emergency RO units, mobile units. This is for strategic uh, reserve in case something happening in the Gulf or anything. It's 30 units. Each one is 100,000 gallon plus storage. It's going to be located in residential areas, water pumping station, water tankers station, and substation electrical substation areas. And uh, these are small units. They can be moved from uh, uh, one place to another one as needed. And these units, these water qualities on some areas has been already tested by Kessler, Quaid Institute Scientific Research, and to see the quality for it's, it's possible to be treated for RO. And this is only the phase one. If it works, it's going to be all over Kuwait. And it will be, I mean, it's, it's an amazing project to do that. And uh, we have done, we, done now, we have received 14 offers and requesting for final approval. The process, this has been tender, proceed, and evaluated, and we're working for CCC approval. The thing that we need the most is the next one. I need this one. Anybody who can find it for me, I want it. It's, it's a RO mobile solar desalination. 100 million per gallon per day. And um, we, would, we would like to buy some of those. You know, if anybody knows where can I find them, you know? And it's a good business anyway. Once we buy one and two, and we can buy a lot, and everybody will buy some of them. 
And I saw them in one of the exhibitions. I gave them my, it's my fault. I gave them my card, tell them, send me email with these things, but they never contacted me. And uh, anyway, so uh, the water, of course, with each uh, water desalination plant, there's water network projects that are going on. And we have piping systems and uh, mixing station systems and reservoirs and water reservoirs all over Kuwait. So these are the projects that are coming up with our new uh, desalination plants to cover the, the, the trans transmission of the water and storage. And I'm, I want, this is not, has nothing to do with water, but it is our alternative energy. I'm proud that Kuwait is going with alternative energy and we are planning to go 5% uh, in 2020 and 15% of our demand by 2030. And we are going full speed ahead with that one, especially with the uh, solar panels and, and the prices are going lower. Of course, the, the oil is going lower now, so it's not, not, not making it very competitive as it was before last year. We have our, our project is one megawatt on uh, Mr. President Water, Mr. Public Water, they are adjacent buildings, and uh, we are producing one megawatt of, uh, from solar PV, and has been working for a whole year and a half right now perfectly, except for the, the cloudy days, which is, has been calculated for it. And, uh, I th and, and this has been a very uh, successful experience, so we are going to implement the same thing on all government buildings and all MEW new buildings that's been under construction and future buildings as well. The other thing, Kuwait Tower, through offset program, Mitsubishi company applied PV on the parking area of Kuwait Tower of 117 kilowatt. That's been existing as well. And uh, Shigaya has been signed the three, uh, the first phase, Shigaya takes 2,000 megawatts, but the first phase was 70 megawatts given by his Highness the Emir to kiss her as a project. And it was like, if it fails, it's Kisser's problem. If it doesn't fail, it's great success, you know? So we didn't want, we didn't want to invest in 2,000 megawatts immediately. So we said 70 megawatts of PV, CSP, and wind. It's 10, 10 megawatts of wind. And the location on Ashigaya, which is the southern of Kuwait between Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, is, uh, is the best location for wind. But we'll see how it goes, how it does operate with the dust uh, in that area. And then 10, mega, 10 megawatts of PB and 15 megawatts of CSP. All this being signed, uh, the 10 megawatts of wind and 10 megawatts of PB will be in operation July 2017, uh, 2016 actually. And then the 50 megawatts will be in operation in July 2017. Once we see this successful, then the whole area will be tendered separately. Uh, actually, now KOC have approached, I mean, KNBC, Great National Petroleum Company, have approached us as well and Kisser to take the land in that area and invest their 15% of energy required into that land uh, as a solar, uh, in, as an alternative of energy of their demand. And uh, we, are, we are working with them now as a team with Kisser, Great Institute of Research, MEW, uh, municipality, everybody for. Uh, to apply that one. PV on water reservoir, the only, one, the only one, the other thing we did a feasibility study, we have a big, huge, huge lands of reservoirs. You cannot build anything on them. And they are really, really like, they will take 10, some of them 10, 20 megawatts, 30 megawatts of, of solar. So we have relocated about 25 locations, but some locations are very old. So Great Institute Scientific Research, they're doing a concrete slab calculation whether it will take the weight or not. And, uh, and we are applying that. Uh, we are applying about 300 megawatt on the 25 locations. And these locations are open space. Some look, only two locations downtown is a bit shaded, because you cannot utilize it. But the other ones are open, saying nothing's going to be built around it. So it's exposed to the sun of all direction. And this will be uh, connected to the network. List of pre-qualification contractors will be announced shortly. Uh, 43 companies applied for that one. And the thing is, uh, we have not finished an announcement because originally in the specification, they required 10 years experience in, alter in solar panels you know, or, or manufacturing. And we discussed it. I said nothing in, in, in alternative energy, 10 years is obsolete now. You know, it's like you buy a mobile from two years ago. Nobody buys a two years ago mobile, you know? It's, so we said, okay, five years. Let them, let, let's have it for five years. So that's what the, some new companies has been added to that one. The other one, Abdali Integrated Solar Combined Cycle. It is a gas turbine with the 
CSP, and it will be it will be by cab as well, and it will be tendered soon. Uh, it's tendered soon, and shortlist for the companies are these are the list if you want to uh, combine with them. These are the big shots, huh? the big we call them in Kuwaiti Hamur, you know. These are the big Hamurs. They are all over, all the projects, you know. But I think they are just. Uh, they have the, 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 the capability, the money, and the technology for that. It's been tendered on 8th, 8th of November and closing day 17th of March. Quite all company KOC tender projects applying installation of maintenance of 10 megawatts. You see, as I said, the all sector is KOC, KMBC, KBC, uh, KBC, all of them. Each one is trying to cover the 15% of their required energy by solar. So they tender a 10 megawatt polycrystalline panels plant in West Omogdir, and the project is under final commissioning. They're waiting for MEW to connect it to the network. And once this is successful, they're going to build more and more in the desert area for their pumping station, for the fuel pumping stations. And the uh, model version of the solar project, we, in our houses are not designed to accommodate solar panel on the roof or something. But we have, uh, we have launched a website called shamskuwait.com. On this website, you apply for your house. If you want to do, uh, if you have 70 square meter of open space uh, for, for panels, then they will evaluate your house. And if it's OK, they will apply solar on your house to see if it works or not. If it works, then we'll apply it for all the houses. The future houses in the new cities, if this recooling implemented, it will reduce 40% of required energy, and plus it will reap the rooftop is all free. So will be, new cities will be mostly green, will be this recooling implemented, solar rooftops and garages, and it will be, uh, solar panels will be applied everywhere in the new, new cities. And, uh, you know, and this, is this other project that we are working on, it applies solar PV on existing car park at the power station. We have huge power station area, huge park area, and we are going to do solar panel. It's going to be tendered very soon as well. The stores has been tendered 3.5 megawatts, and it's going to be final stages. Six, six green building under design now. We're going to make six new uh, mini MEW buildings. So we can reduce the traffic around the area and decentralization. And those will be green buildings with solar rooftops and training center, laboratory centers. And we just started introducing solar water heaters. Uh, this is the undersecretary, the one to the right, and the left is my friend. He just came to me, he said, I have this idea and all this. He, we have evaluated it, we tested it, he, he gave us three for free to test it. Undersecretary, every day in the morning, he comes to the office, First thing he does, tested the water temperature and the panels. And actually now the army is ordering from him, the, uh, the, the people who's having huge building are ordering from him. We are implementing that one in Kuwait now. You know, although you don't need uh, the water heater in summer because the water is already boiling, you need Coolix for that one. I applied Coolix to my water tank. But this is uh, just for saving energy. This one will reduce the, the normal boiler requirement from 8 kilowatts to, to 2 kilowatts only and it's running continuously and it's working fine. And we have done some schools as well. Uh, two schools we have done rooftop solar PV and it's been working fine and we're gonna apply, uh, the Minister of Education is gonna apply it to all of them. University and Moscow Cooperative Center, we have done three cooperation centers, that one on the top. And uh, as I said, all sector is covering as well. And this is the PV rooftop on fuel station. They have done fuel station, two of them, and they're gonna apply it on all fuel station. Fuel station doesn't need much. It's a pumping, pumping and a little bit of lights, you know, and we change the lights to LED so you don't have much energy required. The nice one is the best one. It's going to be the biggest project is in the world that you apply 16 megawatt rooftop of PB on one building. That's the new airport. Hopefully, nobody goes, uh, nobody beats us for that one, you know, by the time. It's tender now. It's under final approval. And it's going to be, it's average cost of 15 million KD. So 16, no building in the world has 16 megawatt on one building. So hopefully this one will go through as soon as possible. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be in Guinness record. And uh, this is an oasis. It's, uh, KOC built an oasis from recycling materials, concrete and all stuff, and used alternative energy wind and, uh, and PV to run the water pumping for the lake. It's just uh, building an oasis in the desert is not easy, so they use uh, the, the alternative energy to, to, to cover the required load for that one. 
Saving energy challenge. You know, I mean, I don't know if everybody knows, but 90, 95% of uh, electricity is subsidized by, by government in Kuwait. So uh, people, consumers pay 5% only, and 93% of water is subsidized as well. And uh, now, I mean, I mean, like let's say last year or the year before when the, 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 the oil prices was $100 and above, it can be said competitive, but now with the prices going down, we have to reconsider, reevaluate whether alternative energy is good to apply or not, because then uh, the tariff have not changed yet. The tariff is still the same, it's not gonna change for a while. So the subsidies on the government burden will be higher. We pay around 3.2 billion KD subsidies every year and 3.2 billion KD fuel for, for water and electricity. Wastewater project, is anybody interested? These are the wastewater projects that are coming uh, in, in Kuwait. We have kept treatment plant. It's going to be expanded. We have, uh, re they are renovating all the networks in Kuwait now. The, the, there's been long, from long time, from the 80s and from the 70s as well. And they have a bridge maintenance of uh, Omel Heyman. It's a BO tender by Kuwait Authority. And its closing date is 29th of February. And uh, this is a big, big project as well. And this operational maintenance of water treatment of Al Wafrads in, in the southern, uh, southern area, southern west area of Kuwait as well. So Libya water treatment plant expansion. So Libya has produced 80 million per gallon right now for the last 10 years. And this water is not uh, in Kuwait. They're not. They, the government and the Islamic says you cannot drink it. It's not right. So we use 40, uh, 40 million gallon for Abdaliya for the. The, the, the farm areas and 40 for the Wafra farm areas. And it's going to be expanded to 120 million per gallon and expected to be tendered by mid of 2016. New cities, we have new cities coming out, uh, big, big cities. Al Khairan about, will accommodate about 30,000 uh, inhabitants, and then Mutla will be uh, accommodating about 15,000. So the Mutla city is coming, uh, a full new city with full infrastructure, water electricity, and uh, wastewater treatment plant and piping will be tender in 2016, end of 2016. And north of Iran, south, south of a great area is not yet uh, specified, but it's a very huge area to be tendered soon. Those two might be uh, private companies running them, not by the government, but we're still not deciding what's, what's going to happen. And the role of renewable energy in wastewater treatment, they started using the sludge treatment through the anaerobic and the, the, the digestion to get uh, methane gas. And they are considering to use the solar system future treatment plant for the pumping station required. But they haven't done. They're doing feasibility study public works right now. Thank you. So, yeah. Really? Yeah, really. I would love to have seen you when you've been silenced. Oh, no, you could uh, use your hand. <laughs> fantastic presentation, fantastic story. Kuwait's done a massive amount of work, and uh, it's advancing on its um, uh, renewables and its energy and water efficiency program quite actively, as you've heard, with uh, some of the biggest solar projects around. Uh, just a couple of questions, and I'll throw it open to the floor. Uh, just the, the procurement process that you mentioned. I know this is not fundamentally part of why we're here, we're talking about sustainability, but in Kuwait you've got the Kuwait Authority for Public Projects, which is the IPP, used to be called the PTP. That's procuring big power stations. And you're going to be procuring this one project, is that correct? The steam, the al Kharain oh, no, ACM steam turbine phase one. Yeah. So at this point, but you could be uh, procuring more after that. Is that yeah, possible? No, two part, actually. No, two part. part one is uh, the 3,000 and part two, 3,000 mega. 3,000 megawatt as well, as will be tendered by uh, mid of uh, 2026 uh, or 27, not yet. It depends it, on the demand. No, but you will be doing the phase one yes, of the steam we have, turbine. We got approval now for both. To do both, so both always have parts. But the, the second phase is, is, is in 10 years' time, roughly, didn't you? Yeah, maybe, yeah. But, so this one is this year, you're saying? This year will be tendered. We print documents now. Okay. And we have and the budget for is it. Is that the first... Uh, Major power plant um, since 2000. Yeah, uh, since uh, yeah. Since 2000. Yes. You haven't forgotten how to do it, have no. you? 
You never forget how to procure. No, Three actually, it's in 2009 because that was, but steam turbines in 2000. Because First steam turbine yeah, is yeah, in, in yeah. Kuwait since because 2000. Because Shaiba, Shaiba North was 2009. Okay, so, so um, and the technology, I mean, is, where's the energy efficiency going to work? Steam turbines are famously. Usually it's 45%, but maybe, I don't know, with new technologies, you know. You're hoping that you can really get some sustainability. Well, if you, have, if you have uh, gas, this is too high. Yeah. If you have gas, then the efficiency will be much higher. Yes. But if you have uh, burning heavy fuel and all, you know, it's going to be 45. Standard is 45. And, and, and this project is definitely, you don't think people will change their minds? No, we can't. We, it's not up to us. You see, when we plan a, a power station, before we plan anything, we plan how many megawatts we want. We send it to KBC. And KBC evaluate they have gas or not. Okay. So and then they tell us you can go combined cycle or steam turbine. Okay. But now they said steam turbine to 2020. And actually there is a, uh, uh, there is a discussion going between Iran that by 2020 they provide us with natural gas. So maybe once we finish the agreement and signing, I love we the will way get you throw things in like this. Yeah. You know, you mention Iran as uh, possible. You've got your LNG import plant, which uh, yeah, we have LNG plant. We have LNG port is going to be is being built. Possibly bringing gas from, from yeah, Iran. Yeah, but there's an agreement going with Iran right now with KBC, not with us, not MEW, but with KBC and Iran. And once they get confirmation that's going on, then we will build the combined cycle again. Okay. But Great. the ministry prepared uh, steam turbine for okay. operation purpose and. Uh, Stability steam turbine is much better. All right, well, it's quite a complex story, but anyway, that's fascinating. And the other projects. You mentioned the mobile ROs, very keen on these. You said 100,000 gallons a day, is it? Or the units? Each Not unit. Each unit will be able to process 100,000 gallons per day. Per day. That's yes. pretty big, isn't it? Yes, so it you're is going for big. 30 yes. of Without those. Yes. And then you mentioned phase the. Phase one, this one, phase one. Phase if one, and if that works, yes. and then you yeah. move on. And then you mentioned the Ashagria. Shigaya. Shigaya, which is in the south, is it? It's yes. in the south. Uh, this is going to be the area where you're saying all the... Alternative energy. All the alternative energy is going to be? Not necessarily, but the land was given to us by municipalities about... It, it accommodates about 2,000, 2,500 megawatts. If they give us expansion, otherwise we can go... Originally it was in the north, north uh, towards the border yeah. of Iraq. But then that land is very... <coughs> Uh, very good soil for agriculture. Right. So I said, no, go that area. Go to the south. And then, and then we might get some other locations. And that, that could be solar uh, or wind turbine. It's combined. It's, it's alternative energy. Yeah, but that uh, would be one uh, area, so 2,000, 2,000. The whole area, yes. And, we, and, and the objective is, what is it, 15% of all... Our demand. Our electricity demand, demand yes. will be met by um, alternative, energy. alternative energy by 2030. Yeah, 2030, we have two scenarios. The first scenario is 30, uh, 30 gig, because if we don't implement this recooling or efficient building efficiency or alternative energy on buildings, stuff like that. The second scenario is 26,000, 6, so we'll use 4,000. So we need between 3,000 megawatts of alternative energy to 4,500. It depends on which scenario we will go with. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Did anybody have any questions at all? Well, you see, our peak is between 12 o'clock until 4 o'clock. Sometimes the summer, is just Ramadan, it gets longer. Uh, solar storage is very expensive. If you want to compare it to the conventional one and to the subsidies that we pay, if we add uh, as well, uh, you know, uh, solar, uh, I mean, batteries and all the stuff, it's going to cost plus. So it's not going to be competitive to, to approve it. But we have storage for the CSPs in Shigaya, the 50 already. So the, the CSPs will be with, with solar sto with storage in the future. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, yes please, Dr. Ali. I don't have it. I have three questions, Sahila. Sure. Uh, my first question about the cab. Is it, uh, a new, uh, I'm not aware, is it a new trend in the government to go for private sector to do it, or they have experience, and you have experience in that, matters and to build the desalination and what is the mechanism you are doing that okay cab started in 2010 okay 
Okay, it was PTB, Partnership Technical Bureau Office. It's a small group. They're ba basically they are not technical. They are financial, economic, and uh, legal. But they depend technically on us, on our team, that we have a big team that's in the ministry. Okay? Uh, all of a sudden, the prime, prime minister and the council of ministers decided to go private sector. BOT was in the picture from before. And then they call it IWPP. IPP is the same story at the end. Anyway, uh, so they decided that it started with the first project that Azor North, phase one. But Azor North was uh, two phases. It was tendered by MEW, and it was tendered like five times already. You know, I'm, I'm talking about from 2004, 2006, 2000. And then it was, the problem is that 2006 was tendered, and then one bidder came in, and then it was steam turbine. And then by that time, the bidder, one bidder was canceled. Uh, oil company said, you know, K KBC said, Kuwait Petroleum Company said, change to combined cycle. Uh, because we have gas. So by the time we get the document combined cycle, preparing, get a consultant, redesigning the area, it was too late. So we tendered in 2010. By the time we get the tender, the law came out for the PTB. They said, give this one to them. Okay? But I'm telling you, IWPP is a very success story in Kuwait because uh, Azor North Phase 1, actually, they give us power <coughs> <coughs> the, first, the, uh, the first phase, it says two phases. It's one is steam tur uh, gas turbine open cycle and then steam turbine. They were supposed to give us the full uh, gas turbine, 660 megawatts by end of uh, September. I, but we got it in July. I, I think the, uh, maybe to supplement that answer is that Kuwait is one of the only two countries in the Middle East that have a specialized uh, PPP, privatization, unit and the way it works in Egypt in Kuwait is that this unit specializes in procuring on a privatization basis but the ministries do all the work and planning and when it's decided that it's going to be a PPP project it's then put into the PPP process and maybe Saudi Arabia which I know is looking at privatization yeah. could set up a similar kind of model that Egypt's got with the ministries identifying projects and handing them over to a team that specialized in dealing with the financial community and lawyers and other things. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, my quest, uh, second question, please, uh, again to Mobile RO. I think it will be a challenge really to run the RO for a few hours because you will, you will uh, find later for the biofouling problems and that one if you are not run continuously the, the mem uh, membranes. So PV will be, uh, once, unless you are using a grid, I mean, to run it at a low level, I mean, to keep uh, membrane without uh, that one. So maybe I'm sure that it's taken into account to, to do that. Yeah, but you, as I said, this is a first uh, phase and in different locations. So we'll see how it works. If it works fine and it's running properly, then we will do the rest one. If not, then... But the, the mobile yes. reverse osmosis units, I mean, they're reasonably standard. It's standard, you yes. You move them around. No, no, I mean, in the night, if you don't run the RO... Oh. No, 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 that's not solar. That The car I saw, I want that one. The one I have is not solar. Uh -huh. No, the 30 no, 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 the 30 is units is not solar. It's not solar. No, no, I, that, I want that one. The mobile RO, uh, the picture I show, I want that one. Okay. So he was looking yes. for someone who but makes the, one we are the doing, mobile. No, the so. one we are doing is not solar. Okay. No, it's not solar, it's running continuously. So, good point. Okay. Third point, Dr. Yeah, yeah, the third point about, uh, uh, let me see, about the renewable energy. I mean, that your target is really ambitious to reach that. So is uh, the government is paid the difference in the prices? I mean, what is the prices, I mean, for the renewable energy? If you give it to private sector and you get the... Uh, from them, the, the you want the alternative or the IWPP? It's either way, we, we buy the power. Okay. Nobody else can buy the power by law. A, a ministry buy the power, and it's subsidized, as I said, 95%. So whatever the cost is, okay, people pay two fills. The rest is subsidized, whether it's alternative or conventional or IWPP. It doesn't matter. Okay, thank you very much. I think... I think we're running out of time. I know Sahela wants to catch, catch the bus. bus. What time is it? 
It's not quite four o'clock. Okay, and the bus good. is at four. We can get in a coffee. Yeah, I think you can rush for that one, Taylor. Yeah. So it is tomorrow, uh, until tomorrow. So I hope you take the opportunity of finding out more. And the presentation extremely detailed, and it's worth review. So will you show your appreciation, and please you express your best wishes to Sahela Mamarafi from MEW Kuwait.